Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have my book review of the book Ascension by Christy Golden. This is the eighth and penultimate book in the Fate of the Jedi series. And I've been enjoying the Fate of the Jedi series. I have enjoyed the first seven books in the series that I've read. The series has been cycling through authors. You go uh, a book by Aaron Alston, like Outcast, uh, which I enjoyed. Omen by Christy Golden, which I enjoyed. Abyss by uh, Troy Denning, which I enjoyed. And then it cycles through again a second time with Backlash by Aaron Alston, which was, I think, a much better book. And then Allies by Christy Golden, which was a much better book. And Vortex by Troy Denning, which was also a very good book. And then we had Conviction, which was a good book, but was frustrating in elements. And that's uh, cycling for the third and final time by Troy or Alan, Alan, Alan uh, Aaron Alston. Can't talk today. And then t now I read and, and reviewed Ascension by uh, Christy Golden. And while I've been enjoying the series up to this point and had things I've liked, things I've disliked, this book right here has absolutely jumped to my list of top Star Wars books. Like, not just in this series. It's for sure the best book in this series so far. But it is in my list of top Star Wars novels of all time. Because this book is brilliant at everything it tries to do. And I'm very pleased with it. So, uh, I'll, I'll say that there's a lot of it that this book gets right. But there's certain things that if you've not been following along with the series, you're going to get spoiled. So... I'm going to say, I'm going to delve into spoilers here, so if you uh, don't want to know spoilers for Fate of the Jedi, just know I think this is the best book in the series, uh, and really is also just a tremendous book. But uh, also, uh, just uh, I, might, I might talk a little bit spoiler-free at the end, but for right now, going into spoilers, the opening sequence where Abeloth goes to Kesh and meets with the Lost Tribe of the Sith was really good and it was a 60 page sequence and uh of course it's told from like gavar kai's perspective and lord um not lord vol i think maybe lord vol um the different the different lords of the sith down on um uh the lost tribes area of kesh and uh it's 60 pages which is a long time to go without seeing any of your main characters luke han leia jaina Ben, like you're not seeing any of them in this sequence. It's just the Lost Tribe and Avaloth. And it is dark and it is a, a, a for, foreboding moment because you know something bad's going to happen. And then Avaloth does the bad thing and blows stuff up and leaves and it's a great sequence. And then you go to our heroes on um, Coruscant, and they're dealing with all the coruscant -y stuff, the new po political changeover. And I love the politics of this series, and I love the, the exploration of who's in charge and whatnot. But this book was just pure chaos. This character's in charge, then they leave, then this character's in charge, then they leave, then this character. And it just, it just kept changing, and the power structure kept shifting. And towards the end of the book with the political power structure, I knew, uh-oh. This is bad. And they kept saying, they kept saying, oh, there's this character. I don't believe she has any force power. I don't sense any force power from her. They keep, the, the lost tribe of the Sith who has infiltrated Coruscant keeps saying that they don't believe that she is um, uh, 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 force sensitive. And it just keeps, they say it so many times. I was like, okay, this has to be Abeloth. You don't say this so many times without it coming. And of course, it was Abeloth, not too to be sure. Um, uh, and by the way, the sequence where Abeloth reveals herself to Wynne Dorvan was one of the freakiest moments of Star Wars storytelling I have ever read. Like, genuinely horrifying, creepy, oh my goodness, like, that is scary. Like, if I saw that on the TV screen, I would freak out. Like, that was fantastically written stuff. And so I loved that. I thought it was really well done. 
You also had the best, the absolute best of the Luke and Ben going on adventures subplot here. Here they go to Korriban. And I think that this works, one, because, of course, it's connecting to the video games and the other novels and comics and whatever. But Cor- but it just felt like a natural, okay, we're going to a Sith homeworld that we're all familiar with as an audience. And we're going to Korriban and we're seeing uh, all the, the, the waste and the stuff. And then you meet Gavar Kai and the Lost Tribe who's there to stop um, uh, Vistara, uh, Vistara and all them. And that sequence was great. The sequence of the battle there was great. And, uh, of course, Vistara having to kill Gavar was just really well done. And her and uh, Luke, I'm sorry, her and Ben getting captured and stuff uh, later on in the book was good. But I thought, you know, they're the two on the cover is Luke, or not Luke, sorry, Ben and Vistara. Ben and Vistara are a couple I really enjoy reading about. She is a character who is very serious Um, uh, and he's more uh, lighthearted, and so they kind of play off each other well. But he's very good-natured, and and he's very heartened by her. He's very heartened whenever he meets her. He very much... um, he, he's he's trying to help her, and he has this... It's not just because he's falling in love with her. It's also because he genuinely wants her to turn to the light and, and, and become a Jedi and all this stuff. And so their sequences, when they're on the Jade Shadow and they're sitting and talking and, oh, their, their romance... Like, before, it was just kind of teased, and it was all more like, nah, she's just doing this to... Um, uh, uh, to be part to 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 betray him to the lost tribe eventually. Now it's real here, and you can tell it's real, and it's just it's just so so artistically done. Meanwhile, we also have some other things happening. We have uh, the Jedi are figuring out what are we gonna do um, uh, after this, and I think I think that was the biggest mistake in the book was the Jedi abandoning Coruscant. That was kind of a you think yeah that was dumb. Like maybe send out a couple of Jedi. Like, if, 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 if I was in charge of the Jedi Order, I would say, okay, we're going to send half the Jedi Order to all Yavin 4 or whatever other planet we want to use. But I would not have abandoned Coruscant and just said, we want to avoid the politics because you have to be protective of Coruscant, especially when you have the tre- threat of Abeloth and the Lost Tribe. And I know that they think that she's off doing gallivanting across the galaxy, but it's like, you realize that the most important planet is Coruscant. Like, we can say, you know, there's other important planets in Star Wars, like maybe Tatooine has more importance. Um, Tatooine certainly has more importance to the mythos of Star Wars, I think, but Coruscant has the most importance to the politics, to the populations, to in-universe stuff, like, Coruscant's an important place, planet. Don't just abandon it. it. Like you know, they're like, oh yeah, we'll leave Leia. Uh, yeah, you like that's that's not a good option. Don't just leave Leia. Um, and so that was very to me. That was the one part of the book I did not like was when when Luke decided like he immediately got back to Je- Coruscant and then let's go guys. It's like you finally got out of exile and you're leaving again. Come on, man. And I'm a little bit, you know, biased because I'm reading this. I know the Lost Tribe is on Coruscant. I know that they're gaining power and I also know Abeloth is present, but whew, the um um that's just so, so frustrating that, that that he did that. Anyway, back to what I loved about the book. I thought that the sequence where, you know, they're kind of they they they're they're like the 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 the, the secret Boatu's uh, secret group, his club, as he calls it, uh, they, they put the person in the jail cell, and they're just like, all right, uh, uh, we're going to interrogate you a little bit. All right, we'll be back. And they leave, and then out of the shadows come the Sith, and the person's like, Whew, I'm saved. And then uh, the Sith just killed the person. It was like, oh, that was so well done. That was that was so unexpected. So, And, and, and the way they turned the Jedi Temple itself into a horrifying place, and now the Je- Tem- Jedi Temple is now a Sith temple, and now the head of the Gal- Galactic Alliance is Abeloth, is just freaky. And I haven't read Apocalypse yet, but I can just bet they're going to have to use the Empire to stop Abeloth, which is just going to be hilarious. And speaking of the Empire, um, we get one of the best space battle sequences we've had in a long time in Star Wars. Basically, Jagged Fell, he is, um, uh, for lack of a better word, 
uh, he ends up kind of playing a trick on um, uh, Dala, who is trying to usurp power, which to me, Dala should have gone after the Empire anyway from the start. Back in the, um, uh, ba- back in the Legacy of the Force, she should have tried to take over the Empire. That was a much more logical step for Dala to take. Why on earth did she think the Galactic Alliance would work for her? It doesn't match the personality of Dala to me. It, like, it absolutely was not a good fit. Empire is a good fit with, for her. Galactic Alliance, no. Um, and so she decides finally to go do that, but it's a little too little too late as one of her one of her people that she thinks is going to be on her side betrays her, kind of, and shoots a jagged, but it's a stun bolt, but she doesn't know that. And so she's confident, okay, he's he's dead, let's move in. And then jagged uh, comes up and he's like, wait, wait, don't don't attack me. let let me the, the moths like, hang on, I did this for a good reason. Let me prove it to you. That whole sequence was just delightful. Um, and then the, the whole space battle that came up afterwards. And having Tahiri serve as Jag's, Jagged's personal assistant was brilliant. First of all, I just think someone needs to have they, have they ever heard of pardons in Star Wars? Have they never heard of pardons? I mean, they talk about pardons elsewise, but nobody thinks, let's pardon Tahir- Tahiri. She's going to be working for the head of the government that she just murdered. Like, we we we're trusting her now. Let's just let's just um, pardon her anyway. That's so frustrating. I know it's there's political reasons, but uh, but uh, but having Tahiri come on board with Jagged was genius writing move on the. I don't know whether it was Christy or it was the whole team. Genius writing move that that worked perfectly. That absolutely was the right move for her. If they had kept Tahiri on the run in this series absolutely would have been kind of a retread of storylines we've read before. Her going and serving as an assistant to Jagged, genius, I think. So, I mean, I don't know if you can tell, I'm gushing about this book. I love it. It is seriously, like, when I talk about favorite Star Wars books, it's up there. And it's kind of funny that, you know, I wouldn't necessarily put Fate of the Jedi as my favorite series, or even in the top three necessarily, but I would say this book is on the level of some of my favorite Star Wars books I've ever read. So I thought this was a brilliant. I cannot wait to read Apocalypse. I was dreading reading the rest because I was afraid they weren't going to stick the landing. I am so hopeful they're going to stick the landing now because, man, was this book great. Christy Golden leveled up as a Star Wars author. I've now read all of her Star Wars books, um, all of her Star Wars novels, that is. But this book was was fantastic. So if you've read Fate of the Jedi Ascension, what did you think of it? Let me know in the comments section down below. Uh, and what do you think of the final book that I'm about to read, Apocalypse? Let me know that as well. But until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.